So hold on, let me check out Notepad++. What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video. And today I wanted to dive into Notepad++. Now I've been using Notepad++ for a number of years now, and it's mainly been on the Windows operating system for work because it, it essentially is a souped up version of Notepad. If you guys don't know what Notepad is, it's just the default text editor that's included in Windows. Well, Notepad++ solves a lot of issues with that small application to make it a whole lot better. And today I wanted to discuss the recent release of Notepad++ as well as the vulnerabilities, but also give a quick overview of what Notepad++ is for those who are not familiar with it. And before we get into that, if you already subscribed, thank you for your support. And if not, hit the subscribe button and let's get started. All right, so first off, I wanted to show you guys what Notepad++ is, if you never heard of it, but this is the main website for it. And this basically covers everything about Notepad++. You can download it, get it installed on your Windows operating system. And I just wanted to read a little bit about it, but Notepad++ is a free source code editor and Notepad replacement that supports several languages running in the Microsoft Windows environment. Its use is governed by GNU General Public License. So it has that GPL license. And it's based on the powerful editing component, Scintilla. And Notepad++ is written in C++ and uses pure Windows 32 API and STL, which ensures a higher execution speed and smaller program size. And just to give you a, you know, a screenshot of it, but that's what it looks like, it's, it's super cool. And also, it is included in the Ubuntu repositories and a couple other repositories as well, where you can install it directly from the software center. And I'll show you guys quickly installing it on Ubuntu after we cover the vulnerabilities. Now that I've covered the basics, let's shift the focus on to the recent development surrounding Notepad++. And you might have heard that this popular code editor has been in the spotlight due to some critical security vulnerabilities. But before we delve into the details, remember that even the most reliable software can have its vulnerabilities, which is why it's crucial to stay informed and update your tools regularly. So let's get to the nitty gritty of these vulnerabilities. And as you can see on the title, it says Notepad++ 8.57 released with fixes for four security vulnerabilities. And of course, I'll have the link to this article down in the description of the video, but I wanted to go on and cover it right fast. Notepad++ version 8.5.7 has been released with fixes for multiple buffer overflow zero days with one marked as potentially leading the code execution by tricking users into opening specially crafted files. And Notepad++, you know, we kind of covered that. It's a popular free open source uh, editor that supports many programming languages and can be extended via plugins. And that's one cool thing about Notepad++, and that's why I've been using it for years, especially in the Windows environment because of those plugins and it offers productivity enhancing features such as multi-tabbed editing that's something i've used a whole lot in syntax highlighting so it, like i said this this is an awesome little tool you know once i found out about notepad plus plus you know i started using that in place of notepad because once you start working on servers or you're managing servers you'll start to use the notepad that's built into microsoft windows a whole lot and once you start playing around with it you realize that it needs a little bit more features and that's where notepad plus plus comes in you know what i'm saying so github security researcher and i don't want to mess up this guy's name but he reported the vulnerability in notepad plus plus version 8.5.2 to the developers over the last couple of months and here is the he, he stated that proof of comps concept exploits have also been published for these flaws in the researchers public advisory making it essential for users to update the program as soon as possible and here are the security flaws that are in notepad plus plus and they have a cve number obviously and you can check out these cves if you want to and i'll just click on the first one so you guys can kind of see what they look like but here is the description you know all the information about the bug all that good stuff so has that CVE number, but let's break them all down. So 40031, buffer overflow, UTF eight underscore 16, read convert function due to incorrect assumption about UTF 16 to UTF eight encoder conversion. So 
like I said, there's more details. If you click on the CVEs, it'll take you to the site where it breaks down these CVEs a whole lot more, but it says global buffer read overflow and character distribution analysis. And I won't read everything, but let's see global buffer read overflow in NS coding state machine, next state. And then right here, this CVE 40166 heap buffer read overflow occurs in file manager detect language from text beginning due to failing to check the buffer length during file language detection so the most severe of these flaws is the 40031 that's why i kind of read that one out it's assigned a cvss version 3 rating of 7.8 which is high and potentially leading to arbitrary code execution however a user disputes that it would be possible to perform code execution using this flaw due to the type of error it is. While it is technically a buffer overflow, it's really only an off by two bugs with practically zero chance to allow the arbitrary code execution, uh, reads a comment to GitHub issue open about the flaw. The other three issues are medium, so they have a medium severity 5.5 uh, problems that I don't wanna mess up his name again, says, might be leveraged to leak internal memory allocation information. So despite his blog and proof of concept exploits being published in August 21, 2023, the Notepad++ developer team did not rush to respond to the situation until the user community pressed for its resolution. Now it says eventually on August 30th, 2023, a public issue was created to acknowledge the problem and fixes for the four flaws made it into the main code branch on 7th, September 3rd, 2023. And then that's when they released, it says Notepad++ 8.5.7 has now been released and should be installed to fix the four vulnerabilities and other bugs listed in the change log. And so that covers, you know, pretty much all I wanted to cover here. Like I said, I have this link down in the description of the video, but let's hop over to my virtual machine so I get install Notepad++ and you guys can check it out for yourself and see what it's all about and you potentially want to use this version of you know that includes the the fixes of notepad plus plus and like i said notepad plus plus is included within the ubuntu repository i haven't checked in a lot of the other repositories but it's in debian based and i think i've seen it in orch as well i'm not sure about everything else so just look for it you may have to install it the manual way but I'll show you guys, you know, right here on Ubuntu. All right, cool. So I'm in my Ubuntu 22.04 install in a virtual machine. And let's just go right into the install. And I wanted to just walk through, you know, you can install it from the command line, but I just mainly wanted to show you guys in here. So you can search, you know, within the software center for notepad. I just search notepad, it should come up. And there is a couple other ones, you know, you could probably check out, but Notepad QQ. But the one I'm looking for is Dash uh, Plus. And it should be in a repository last time I seen. And you can install it. This is the Notepad Plus Plus. Uh, it uses Wine. As you can see, it's a snap. So you can install a snap and get that going right there from the software center. And let's just go through and install it. You, you can look at the reviews. It doesn't have high reviews. And that's why I recommend most of the time when I show network Notepad++, I tell people to try Notepad QQ. And so we can open it up and as you get, let, let's go down and look. I want to show you guys the current version right now in here is 8.4.9, but let's wait for this thing to finish. All right, cool. So the installation is complete. And what I'll do is actually, let's just install both of them so you guys can see what they look like. This one right here. And yeah, this is the actual dev package. And I did a video showing you guys how to get this installed as a replacement for Notepad++. But like I said, you can install the full Notepad++ from the repository as well, which is that one we just did. So I wanted to show you guys both of the applications open so you guys can see. You pick which one you want. You can look at the reviews. This one has pretty much the same features. I believe this is a clone, most likely, or a fork of Notepad++. And it's basically ported it over to run on Linux. Like I said, this is a dev package. So let's wait for that to finish as well. All right, cool. So it's complete. Let's go on and close it. And if we go to the little start menu, you can go in here and look for Notepad++. Yeah, it should be 
right here boom and like i said it uses wine and if you guys have never heard of wine it essentially allows you to run windows applications on linux so right now wine is configuring <laughs> it, has, it takes a little while to set up and it kind of creates like a, somewhat of a windows environment for the application to run like it's on windows so this would be affected by this buffer overflow vulnerability but anyway as you can see boom we got it open there is another version will pop up and say that other version i'm not sure if we could download it let's see yes let's go down and update it that way cool so we can get that latest version okay yeah this should make the fixes for us see the degree and let's see if it actually works i don't think it might i don't think it's gonna work let's see all right let's get it open yeah so there we go and now that i see the number that's actually not the right version it should be 8.5.7 that's the one that addresses those cves but this is the version before that but yeah like i said this text editor is awesome let's go down and run the other one right fast just show you guys a little bit of the difference i won't go through setting up plugins and all that stuff let's let's pop them up like this boom there we go so as you can see a little bit different you know it looks a little different this actually works a little better for me in my opinion the notepad qq i would recommend you install that one you can get plugins and all that stuff on notepad qq as well but as you can see all the features up here it, it definitely works on you know windows especially when you, <laughs> when you put a lot of the plugins in and all that stuff this definitely enhances the notebook that's included with windows all right so that wraps up today's video and just to recap you know i cover both the essentials of notepad plus plus and the recent security vulnerabilities that every cybersecurity professional should be aware of because like i always say you need to stay informed and proactive in the cybersecurity field and it's essential for safeguarding your digital world and so paying attention to these vulnerabilities is super important for everybody that's in that field and if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your peers. Subscribe to my channel. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And of course, keep it tech.